the go still on with the flow how is everything going how's everything going for you kila kitu ni sawa sawa last time i talked to you i was miserable hey i was missing my kahabi Woo! i wanted to cry i hope that you picked up some good uh pieces of advice from the things that i was saying about how to manage your relationship during covid you know because this is a difficult situ uh, situation for all of us whether you're married or you're single but i tell you for marriage it can be really tough whether you're living together whether you're living apart it's really tough so i just want to encourage us all so that we don't give up hope today i thought to myself why don't i talk about something that's also on the minds of very many people i've been listening a lot to a radio morning show uh, which is called uh, classic uh, 105 so it's it's actually a very interesting show for those of us who don't know about it but for the kenyans who know about it let's get let's get into it let's get into it okay so one of the things that has been coming up a lot is um the issue of mental health mental health when a woman saying you know me minor i'm crying i am crying i'm so uncomfortable i'm so unhappy i'm so unhappy men are crying minor men are crying and it's so interesting because whenever he calls women to speak, men are the ones who call. I don't know whether it's the men that call or whether it's that they tend to pick up the phone calls more that uh, to do with men or maybe men are more persistent. But men are like, they use the platform to air their grievances and to air their views. It's one of the most interesting shows in the morning and it's a radio show, very, very, very popular. Uh, 105.2 or 105.9 if you're in, in Mombasa. But uh, recently, men have really been complaining a lot uh, about their inability to find love, their inability to satisfy their partners or their lovers, their inability to trust, um, their anger towards their wives, their mothers, their women generally. It seems sometimes like a shock attack. And sometimes you just notice that it's mainly men who are complaining and rarely do you listen to women also because women are kind of like he waits for a long time to get women to speak up and to call for example well anyway this is what i picked up from there that there seems to be a problem generally with the relationships between men and women in the society and there's a general misunderstanding about what to expect probably mismanagement of expectations men and women think differently expect different things and when they get into a relationship, into a marriage, or into like a girlfriend-boyfriend situation, coupling, um, they seem to, you know, clash quite a bit. Sometimes I tell myself that probably it's the fact that people were brought up in uh, all girls or all boys schools. So many girls and boys were separated at high school, which is a very important time when people are developing. Um, and they're developing their, uh, their identities and men and women lose the opportunity to interact. And somewhere there, there's a communication barrier that just happens and continues for a very long time in life, even way into marriage, which is quite unfortunate because you see the issue of boarding schools and, and uh, single sex schools happened um, from the 60s, I would say, or maybe 50s, uh, 60s, uh, with the introduction of colonialism. It's really it did not happen that you know men and women were so separated in societies before. Um, men and women, in fact, and young girls and young boys had there were traditions in our traditional culture where m w teenagers or young young people, you know, before they get to marriageable age, like people in their puberty, you know, teenage years, they had these dances that they would go to. And they would dance and, you know, be allowed to kind of like explore and experiment with one another. By the way, they even used to experiment with one another. I know that they would tease one another, you know, a man would like poke a girl and a girl would go, ooh, 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 you know. Or they would be at a dance and, you know, men would start, you know, eyeing the girls. And the girls are dressed nice and sexy, short clothes, you know, beads. Men also, you know, they'll be all decked up. And, uh, of course, the women would pretend not to notice, but men would be, like, looking at the girls and going, mm, I like that one. And the girl would probably be going, mm, he's kind of cute, you know? <laughs> but now we don't really have those opportunities. In fact, when you go back home on the holidays, what happens? Your father and mother lock you up like a chicken in the house and dare you. You dare go talk to the neighbor's son. You dare go talk to the neighbor's daughter. And, unfortunately, that creates communication breakdown uh, between young men and young women who only eventually get to see each other and to communicate 
freely with each other when they get to university and to campus. And suddenly it's like they were like let out of a prison cell. Um, I think that also with the pressures of trying to, you know, trying to perform properly in school and things like that, then it becomes very difficult for them to actually find adequate time to get to bridge that gap of knowledge with each other. So you find a lot of people get into uh, premarital sex very, very early in college because girls, you know, and boys have been like really looking forward to this opportunity to be together without the parents and without the guidance of society around them. So this kind of freedom and also the fact that the society tends to look up to anybody who has managed to get into university, um, then they're kind of like allowed to just be. On the other hand, the ones who don't make it to university or to college end up getting into the workplace, they get married and uh, they just get married and they start having children. And you get married and you start having children and you haven't really had an opportunity to know or to understand the female or the male. Because like I said, from the time, uh, from let's say primary school, when you are like 12 years old, to secondary school, when you're like 20, maybe even up to 20 years old, you never had a chance to speak to women. And suddenly you just move from being 12 year old boy, married to a 21 year old girl. <laughs> or you become like a 12 year old girl, married to a 25 year old boy. And you never really have any opportunity to interact except maybe with your brothers. And usually, you know, that doesn't really help much because you're not really allowed to engage too much with the brothers, uh, friends, etc. So, you know, women have their roles and responsibilities. So I think there's something about the way we're raising our children that's not right, that we should encourage co-education so that children um, do not, there's no, there's no gap and there's no lapse in terms of women and men relating. I know the way my son went to school, he went to schools where he was in day school, and so he was at home with me during the weekdays and also, you know, going to school in a multi, you know, in a school with girls and boys, you know, co-ed school. Um, and so I noticed also that he didn't have the kind of, he doesn't have the kind of shyness with girls that I had myself, for example, going to a convent school with nuns and, uh, you know, missionary nuns and all, you know, who used to tell us horror stories about boys and uh, just warn us about, you know, getting into relationships with boys. So what I can say is um, I think there's something to do with the way that we're bringing up our children and the way we were brought up. So it's up to us as adults to be aware that we're growing up minus a lot of information. So we have to have teachable spirits. So what we can do then to bridge that gap is to have a teachable spirit. Don't come into a relationship assuming you know everything about men or about women, okay? So if you're a woman, be teachable, listen, Listen to other women who have been in relationships with men and they can explain to you, you know, and, and listen to them. Don't like cut them off. And the same thing with men, you know, listen to other men, especially older men and older women who can tell you something about men and women and how you should relate. The other thing you can do, of course, like I always say, is educate yourself. We have access to internet, uh, for internet information, and it's up to you to identify the right people who share your values. And I always say, look for people who share your values. Do not be looking for people like the Beyonce's and Jay-Z's of this world, you know. Although maybe you can learn from them, but I'm talking about people who have been through a lot together, who kind of like are at your level, even in terms of society, maybe they're middle class. We're not talking about the multi-rich talking to you about how to run your relationship because their, their struggles are very different. Not that they don't have them, but they have different struggles from you, you know, who's just come out from college. Uh, the other thing you can do is um, also try and educate yourself from your parents and grandparents. If you have parents who have had stable relationships, uh, a stable relationship, be observant, watch them and see what you need to do. You'll notice a lot of things, a lot of things. So. <laughs> Let me just tell you what, for example, my grandmother taught me. Uh, I learned a lot about how to be married from my grandma. Yes, my grandmother was not educated, but she was very, she was not educated formally, but she was educated in the community and she was extremely sharp, okay? And uh, she had a husband who was quite a complicated guy. Eh? He was like a tough one, eh? probably, you know, he was a tough man, typical African man who, you know, holds the realms of society and, you know, he's a man and you do as he says, etc. So my grandmother, you know, she used to teach her, she used to have a pink bench in her kitchen where she used to counsel women. Women used to come 
and talk about their issues. And sometimes we go to visit them every Friday. We'd go to it was our turn to go visit grandma and grandpa. So uh, my family and I, uh, my our family, there were five children. So each child took a day of the week to go visit the grandparents. Our day was Friday because we would pass through my grandparents' place after school and sit down there and wait, you know, wait for grandma to cook or help her to cook and uh, or help her to go pick up eggs and things like that. And my dad would be there talking to his father and my mom would be there talking to my grandma in the kitchen and we would be sitting there on the bench. And every time we came on a Friday, we would find that grandma has a bunch of women sitting on the bench. There's always one woman who's leaving the bench. We called it the pink bench. So actually we have this program uh, by Jeff Koinange where he has a bench. And it always reminds me of my grandmother's pink bench in her kitchen. So she had this fire in the middle, you know, which usually had some maize burning or some sweet potato burning, uh, not burning, cooking. Um, she also had maybe water on it. She was going to use the dishes or she's making pancakes for us. So she was a very good cook, very good cook. So, but all the time, there would be some woman leaving there. So I think my grandmother was like a counselor of the village. Very interesting, coming to think of it. She was a very interesting woman. So she would be counseling one woman or another. Maybe she has a child who's got a problem, or maybe she has a husband issue, or maybe she has a financial issue, or maybe she's a single parent. There were even uh, people who were looking after the elderly, and some of them were running away from home. My grandmother would keep some of the older people in the home. She would look for them and keep them in the house and feed them, keep them in another house and lock the door and be feeding them. <laughs> she would do all kinds of interesting things. But grandpa was there with his radio. His job was to listen to BBC and listen to KBC and the, the news. Yeah, And he used to speak English with a very British accent because of the British colonialists. So it was quite interesting you know, to have those grandparents because my grandpa was a teacher. Grandparents of both sides were teachers, but I'm talking about my, my paternal grandfather. So my, my paternal grandmother, there's one time I remember when I was about uh, 16 to 18 years old, I was just skipping around, you know, I was an excitable little teenager, and I was skipping around outside and she was busy sorting beans, and she caught my hand. I don't know where my parents were that day. She caught my hand and she says, my kikuyu name is Jerry, and she said, Jerry, okahaha. Okahaha means come here. Says, Okahaha, eke guire. Let me tell you. Uh, Mutumiare, did you okahi kare? Okarika na maudumaya. Matato. In fact, what she said is, when you get married, I want you to remember three things. Three things. And one of them is, Iganera. Kirereria. Horereria. Iganera. Kirereria. Horereria. Iganera means be satisfied. Okay? Be satisfied. You know, um, be content. Be content with your choice. That is your choice. You got married. That was your choice. Okay? Iganera. Kirereria. Kirereria means to be, um, what do we say? To be patient and uh, to, to be long-suffering, kind of, like to allow yourself to not speak too quickly, you know, kirereria, just, be, you know, kirereria, just tolerate, that's the right word, in fact, tolerate, tolerate, okay, iganera, be contented, kirereria, tolerate, okay, horereria, horereria means, like, to put down, put out the fire, if there's a fire, if there's a problem in your relationship, you know, put out the fire. Be the person not to be, you know, increasing the sm smolders, you know, to be billowing out issues. If you have a small issue, don't blow it out of proportion. You be the person who puts out the flame, okay? Quickly diffuse tension. So be a person who diffuses the tension in your relationship, okay? Be the person who is contented in your relationship and be tolerant. And I'll tell you what, those three things have really helped me with my relationship, okay, for example. And it has helped me to avoid many mental health potential problems, such as probably depression, um, anxiety, uh, what, uh, what other thing, you know, feeling kind of like um, un un unhappy, unhappiness, uh, just a feeling unwell or things like that. They can have, it, it, I've applied it in many, many, many things, apart from just marriage. Even relationships at work, contentment, 
you know, with my friends, with the, I think it has also helped me make friends quite easily, okay? So, you remember those three things. Iganira, Horereria, <laughs> and yeah, Iganira, Horereria, Kiririria. All right, so just those three things. And those are Kikuyu, my own traditional, you know, very deep African teachings for relationships. In the modern world, we are taught to be individualistic, not to tolerate anything. We are taught to do not tolerate, okay? We are taught that shout and scream out any time that you have any problem, which is exactly the opposite of what they teach you in African tradition. Um, they also teach you not to be satisfied, not to be contented. Expect more, to have, to have very, very high expectations of your partner. And all these things actually run in opposite direction from traditional teachings. And that's probably the reason why a lot of relationships, one out of two marriages, end up in divorce. And it's usually because of lack of contentment, lack of tolerance, and the um, blowing up of issues out of proportion, not giving them time. Men, specifically, okay, African men, Iganera, be satisfied with the wife that you chose, okay? Be satisfied with the current situation that you're in, okay? Iganera, be satisfied. Don't go over, it's good to have ambition, but you know, temper it with reality. Temper it with contentment. Be content, be even happy with the choice that you've made, okay? Okay? <laughs> and horereria, don't go blowing things out of proportion. Don't go blowing things out of proportion. Try to bring peace into the home. Bring peace into the home. Be the peacemaker. Don't go running everywhere and screaming and shouting how upset you are. Because what happens is that the word of your mouth has power. Has power. So if you go around complaining to other men, oh, these women are like this, these women are like that, seek understanding. Seek understanding. Learn to understand your woman. Okay? And if she's really difficult to understand and you're not happy at all, just like I would tell my son, there is, um, a, there is a counseling available. And when everything fails, you can decide to step out. You can step out, give yourself time to breathe. If you can't breathe in that relationship, get out and breathe. Separate yourself for a while. Give yourself time though. Don't separate and go and find another woman quickly. Yeah? Go and separate and just give yourself time. Step out. You can even just go like for a week vacation. Go for like a month. Go away for, look for a separate place and, and rent it for yourself. Step out. If it means you have to take a six months, one year break, a sabbatical, take a sabbatical from your marriage if you have to, if you absolutely have to, you know, or out of your relationship. Take a sabbatical. Think. You need to be clear in your mind and you also need to heal. But please, be very careful about the words of your mouth and the things that you actually say, yeah? So, but just remember that this life is a difficult life. It's not easy. Eh? We're all in it together. <laughs> be happy. Be content. If that's the woman that you married, that's the woman that you married. Make the best out of the situation. Same thing with you girls. Yeah, ladies, be content. I have this friend called Mary. She knows herself. And she used to tell me that every day she wakes up, she has to remind herself that this is the man she chose, this is the, the man she got married to, and this is the marriage that she's in for life. She has to remind herself every single day she recommits herself to her marriage. And she recommits herself to her husband. And I thought that was absolutely beautiful. Because there are sometimes you look at these guys or these girls and you say, Oh my God, did I marry that man? Oh my goodness, did I marry that woman? Why? What was I seeing in her? Recommit yourself every single day to your relationship and you'll be happy. Because guess what? Nobody is perfect. There's no perfect situation in the world. The person that you're looking out and the grass is on uh, the green, you think the grass is green on the other side. Somebody said it could be Chinese, eh? It could be fake grass. <laughs> it looks greener on the other side, but it's not really grass, yeah? <laughs> so on that note, guys, you know, uh, you know I love you guys. You know that I just love you. And I just don't want to see you getting stressed and miserable, okay? Remember my grandmother's three words to you, yeah? Iganera, horereria, eh? Na? I keep forgetting. Iganera, horereria, and I blank out. Iganera, horereria, kirereria. 
Iganera, Horereria, Iganera, Kirereria. And I tell you, you know, guys, you know, if you have just those three things in your life, those three things, Iganera, Horereria, Kirereria, you're good. You're good. That is your, that is your medicine for this life. Just that. Just that. Okay, guys? It's not that difficult. Figure it. Look for the words in your traditional language. I'm sure it's there. I'm sure it's there. But for those of you who watch me from other countries of the world, I want to just teach you sometimes. I take these opportunities to also give you a little bit of teachings from the African tradition about how to handle your relationships. Okay? So, to do Love you very much. Take care. Don't forget to subscribe, to share. Ta-da! Bye-bye.